Hey, this week's video we're in our basement, which is kind of our kitchen building zone for all of our IKEA cabinets. I'm going to go over a few tips about building cabinets, some things you need to watch out for, how to store your boxes, that's a big one. Um, and then in terms of actually building the cabinets, you pretty much just have to follow the IKEA instructions properly. Uh, so I won't go too much into that, but hopefully this video will be helpful if you are planning to build your own IKEA kitchen. This is our fourth IKEA kitchen in the last few years, so I hopefully have a few tips to share. If you are doing an IKEA kitchen, a lot of the instructions are in the actual boxes of what you need to build. Um, but hopefully there are a few tips, especially how to store things and what you might need, and this should cover that. This is our basement setup. Ignore the mess. We are clearly in a renovation right now, and I have everything organized in different piles. When you get your IKEA boxes, you should definitely sort them out. I'm just gonna walk through and kind of explain our different sections. This here is where we have all of our drawers. You know it's a drawer because it's gonna say Maximera on it. And you see how these are all kind of piled and you can't access the bottom. You don't really wanna store them like that, but because they're drawers, you don't need them right away. So you can kind of leave them like that and build them all at once. Moving over, we have our stools and our micro hood. So that's stuff that we'll need later. And then over here, I have all of the shelves and long section brackets and then the toe kicks. Anything that's going to have the word Utresta on it is either going to be a shelf or a drawer um, front that goes inside the cabinet. So again, you don't need these right, right away, but it's good to have them separated from everything else. Moving over here, we have cabinets that have already been built and organized kind of in their location. And then we have the boxes here. Anything that's going to say section on them and they're going to show like a little picture of what the actual cabinet looks like is going to be a cabinet box that you're going to need when you're building and assembling your kitchen. So these are the most important ones. And I like to store them upwards like this, that you can easily kind of move them and grab a box that you want and see what they are. Rather than piling all on top of each other, then it's gonna be hard to get to the bottom. For small things, I have them all organized in this one cabinet. This is an interior um, turnstile. These are all the hinges of one side, that's the hinges of another side, and these are all of the legs for the cabinets. I'm doing a quick time lapse to show how we built this IKEA section cabinet. I think this is just a wall cabinet, but they're all pretty similar whether they're wall cabinets or base cabinets. I like to build right on the box. If you don't have the box or need more room, make sure to build it on a rug or soft surface like they suggest in their instructions. I organize all my pieces, make sure I have my hardware, and use a screwdriver to install the screws. You'll see my husband, he is just fixing up and finishing the cabinet that he started building before, and that is for over the fridge. That's why it has the little air hole for ventilation. In the IKEA instructions, they don't want you to use any drills because you could damage the screws. But I find that you almost need a drill for the thick little screws on the L brackets because they are really thick and hard to screw in. I usually just use the drill to start it and then finish the tightening with a hand screwdriver. You'll notice we usually have a child or two hanging around and it definitely makes building things a bit trickier. When you're installing your hardy board panel, that's the thin one that goes right in the back, just make sure that you have the brown cardboard section facing outwards and not on the inside of your cabinet. I did make that mistake with one of my cabinets, but it's not that big of a deal. When you're hammering in your nails, make sure to install them on the dotted line. They put it there as a guide and that way your nails won't go through the other side. Once you're done, put your cabinet away and either install it or store it for later. There will be extra hardware depending on how you're going to install it, but I like to put all of the hardware together in one spot ready for install. Now I'm going to be sharing how I built a Maximera drawer. There is another drawer style, but I like the Maximeras because they are really heavy duty and they have the nice soft close feature. This is one of the drawers that goes inside a cabinet. 
which just means that it has a white drawer front and it'll be hidden behind a door and there won't be any handles on it. One thing you really need to pay attention to is the way the little silver pieces here are positioned. They're either going to be screwed in with the top holes, the bottom holes, and upwards or downwards, depending where your drawer is going to go in your cabinet. You'll see that I also used a drill for these, but it's because my screwdriver didn't have the correct bit and I couldn't get in tight enough to these spots. If you're building a traditional drawer and not one of these inside hidden ones, you will use the panels that come in separate boxes and these will match the style of your kitchen. And depending on the height of your drawer, you may or may not have these long pieces. These are just extra supports when the drawer front is really high. Also, depending on what type of cabinet and how many drawers you have is going to be where the location of your sidebars go. For now, I'm not going to be installing them in our cabinets, so I just store them inside and make sure to put all the instructions and hardware together. One thing we don't have right now is our kitchen uh, panels and fronts and door fronts. If you are ordering yours from Ikea, you should get them as well with your delivery. They're just going to be kind of skinny boxes, uh, whatever size your cabinets are is going to be the size of those panels. You don't need the drawer fronts or the doors until you are ready to install those of your, in your kitchen, but you will need the panels when you're actually installing.